Hey everyone, this is Daniel, and in today's video, we're going to talk about how to create a quiz in Microsoft Forms. And we're going to go through this in detail. I'll show you how to go ahead and create the answers, assign points, how to shuffle those answers, and even show you how to build some math type questions. So stick around. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. Now, one of the first things I always do is I always come to office.com because that's kind of my place where I get started. And if you come to office.com, um, on the left side where it is the vertical navigation, over there you should see Microsoft Forms. If you don't, go to the top left through the waffle icon, and over there also you should see Microsoft Forms. So that's basically how you access Microsoft Forms. Now, once you access Microsoft Forms, this is usually what you see. And on the top, you can always go ahead and start building the form. Or you can also go down, scroll a bit to the bottom, on a kind of middle area, and then you go to all my forms, and there you only see the forms that you've created. So I thought I'll do a little, you know, throw that little tidbit in. Now, to build a quiz, you actually have to go to the drop down, and that's where you click on the new quiz option, all right? So it's not that easy. You don't just click on the plus form, because all you create is a form or a survey. For a quiz, you gotta click on that drop down. And so now let's start building a fun form, which I've kind of, you know, for you to kind of guess about me, like a quiz about me. So I'm going to hear it says, you know, um, uh, what do you know about Daniel? And I'll put that as a question. So I'll also go and add a little theme to it and you know, kind of make it a little bit more fun, you know, get, get this information in. So we've got some nice things going on. Now, the first type of question I'm going to come is I'll click on add and I'll go with the choice. So in my choice, when I click that, the first question I'm going to add is, what is Daniel's primary role? And over here, I'm going to start adding. Uh, hey, actually, did you see what happened? That's pretty neat. What happened is the intelligence came in and I accidentally selected that. And when I selected it, these were the options. It automatically populated. But that's not the case for me. See, so when I take it out, it actually puts it over there. So I'm kind of glad that that accidental mistake happened, but it's a good example. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding some options. And my options is going to be husband, father, and son. So that's actually the correct one. But I'll also give some more options, like husband, here, I'll get another one, father, and I'll also give another one, son. Now, these were the options, but the top one is the correct. Now, as I hover on it, you've not started noticing these three icons show up. The trash can or the recycle bin is basically a trash can. Then there's a place to add comments, and then here's the check. The check box or the check mark is what's telling me that, hey, that's the way you actually you know, select which is the correct answer. So that's what I'm gonna do, because the first one is correct. But then I'm also gonna add that little effect where it says that, hey, if you've selected the correct answer, here's the explanation why that option is the correct answer. So we're here, I'm actually gonna give the explanation. And the explanation is, is, you know, Daniel has several roles. And that's what I'm gonna put in there. Now, along with this, there's a couple of things you can do. Obviously, you gotta hit the required toggle switch because every question is required. So I'm gonna select that. But here, you can go and click on the ellipsis and you can turn on the shuffle options. Shuffle options is very good for those scenarios where you know, you've got four answers um, and you know, those students who can you know, always remember, they've got that photographic memory and they've said, man, I've got three answers wrong, which means now it's quite uh, possible that that fourth one or that third one, in that order, that one which I didn't collect, uh, click three times, that one's gonna be the correct one the fourth time I attempted. To stump those people, you can turn on the shuffle options and then now the quiz really becomes you know, challenging. So just thought I'll throw that in. So that's one example. Now, what I want to do is I want to also go ahead and choose another option and we'll go ahead and switch that up a little bit. So in this one, I'm going to say, how old do you think Daniel is? All right. And over here, I'm going to put some options. I'm going to say 18 to 25. I'm going to say 26 to 35. I'm going to say 36 to 45. And I'm going to say uh, 46 plus. Now, We've already gone ahead and now, you know, and the, if you notice how the IntelliSense and it's very, the Microsoft Forms is really smart. It now went ahead and already put this question uh, in the quiz required. I didn't tell you to do that. So I kind of like this smartness, which is built into Microsoft Forms. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that shuffle, I mean that uh, ellipsis, and this one I'm going to change that into drop down. So the moment you change it into drop down, it still has that shuffle option, which is there. But now the question will not be radio buttons, it will be drop down. And it's only a single selection. 
And then for this one, again, I'll be able to go ahead and assign some points. So I'll go ahead and say, this is also another five point. This was also, we forgot to assign. I'm gonna give that as five points. So again, it happens over here. Now you do have the function, now that you added the second one, you have the functionality to move this up and down. Um, that's not with the shuffle option, which is available. You choose which order you wanna go into. The shuffle right now is only tied into the questions over here, right? So let's move forward. Now I wanna show you how we can use the text functionality also as a quiz. So in this one, I'm gonna actually jazz things up a little bit. I'll make it a little complicated. And I'll say, how many YouTube videos do you think Daniel has um, created? Now answer is just a simple answer. But what I can do is I can also show that, hey, as long as it's these three answers, it's correct. So what I can say is that the, the correct answer is 250 plus, all right? So I'm gonna do that. But I'm also gonna go and say, hey, you can put in this formula. And if you wanna put a formula, you can turn on the ellipses and get that math. And moment I do the math, I can actually enter the equation. So I can enter the equation by saying the formula is 2x plus five, and that is the correct formula. So that can be an answer. I can be an answer, well actually, the answer up over there. Um, the answer I need to put in is right here. It is two, x plus five. Like there's no right or there's no actually a numerical answer. If you put that formula in, you've got that correct answer. And then the other option also is 300 plus, all right? Because it depends on which videos they're talking about. And then the, uh, no, the points is added over there. So that's one other way of putting in a quiz is your person has to type in an answer, but they can put in as a math quiz as well. This would be a great option for those school teachers where they want to use a quick and easy way to put in some math type questions. This is what it is. And the other functionality is that you can use this image. So if you actually want to show your students that, hey, this is a geometrical figure and you want an equation to calculate the area or the volume, that's a good example of how you can use this functionality because it's got the math and the formula function into it. Now, the last one I wanna show is the option to go ahead and come over here and select ranking. Ranking, and a great example for ranking is I will show you what is the order of the Power Platform uh, family release, all right? And this is a great example, because what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you in what order that all these members of the Power Platform family released. So we all know that Power BI was the first member of the family that released. Next one was Power Apps and Power Automate, because both of these released at the same time. And then last but definitely not the least was Power Virtual Agents. So these came in and I'll go and, squeeze. this is like the big 50 point score. Now read over here, it says set options in the correct order. When you share this quiz, options will appear in a random order. So what you gotta do is you gotta make sure that when you put it over here, you set in the correct order because that is the order which is gonna be the correct one. And if students put it in this order, they get that 50 points. But when the quiz is taken, this order will completely get changed. So now we've got all these four options put in, great examples of quizzes, let's do a test, all right? So I'm gonna to go to the preview, and over here it says, what is Daniel's primary role? Now if you remember, when we went ahead and set this up, the you know setting up the quiz, husband, father, and son was the first thing we typed up. But because we turned on the shuffle, it is getting a different order. So I'm gonna select the correct one, which is here. Next one is, how old do you think is Daniel? I'm gonna intentionally put that as a 18 to 25, which I am not. Um, and then how many YouTube videos over here? I'll actually go ahead and put in, say, a number. Uh, I could even put in a formula, because remember, I've turned on that math feature. So again, for this one, I can put in 2x plus, I think I put in five, if I'm wrong. Again, another great example. And then over here, I'll go ahead and change that up. So okay, the Power BI was first, Power Apps was there. Um, and it's, it's pretty correct, the order is already correct, but I have the functionality to go ahead and change it and things like that. So now I've done everything, I'll go ahead and hit submit. When I have submitted, I can see the results. In the results, it's great because it tells me that this is the correct one, I got the five points out of it, and it gives me that explanation. Next thing over here, how old do you think Daniel is? I got a negative five. Now over here, I should have put in an explanation, but I did not. However, five points were taken out. And then in this case, it was how many YouTube videos, it was a correct formula, so I got the five points. And then here, it also go in and gave me all the three of them are correct, therefore I get all 50 points. The review just gave me a really good result of how I did in this test. So as a quick recap, we went through the quiz functionality of Microsoft Forms, and I showed you some of those question types which are actually the only quiz functionalities available. 
For example, the radio buttons, you can show the radio buttons and you can add the shuffle option to go ahead and shuffle it so that if students came back and retook the test, they wouldn't be able to kind of memorize the order. The options can also be switched over as a drop down. And you can even add math type of functionalities to really put in a quiz type effect. So hopefully this was helpful to you. And as always, keep using Microsoft Forms. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube video. Remember, this is all free with fresh content that is updated on a weekly basis. So if you've already subscribed to my channel, thank you and spread the word. If you haven't already, subscribe, click on the bell notification and let the learning begin.